All right, what is going on everyone? So today I'd like to talk about some new research on diet breaks. So in case you're not familiar, a diet break is basically a dieting strategy. And I think that this was first popularized by Lyle McDonald in his book, The Guide to Flexible Dieting. And if you guys haven't heard of that or read it, I'd recommend giving it a quick read through. Um, I'll link it down there in the description, but Lyle's work is fantastic and this book is no exception. And he based his dieting guidelines in this book off an earlier 2003 paper from Wing and Jeffrey. And basically they found that whether you diet someone for 20 weeks straight, so they're just on basically the same deficit for 20 weeks, or if you give them a six week diet break in the middle of the 20 weeks, or if you give them three evenly spaced two week diet breaks, at the end of the 20 weeks, you'll basically see the same weight loss, or at least that's what they found in that study. And this was initially really surprising to these researchers because they were implementing these diet breaks to sort of induce weight gain in the subjects. So what they speculated was that maybe these diet breaks are helpful in terms of long-term sustainability and long-term weight loss. Um, so from 2003 until now, there haven't really been any other studies that have looked into this. Uh, but this year, we got a new paper from Byrne and colleagues. And basically they took 36 obese men and they split them into one of two groups. So the first group basically just dieted straight for 16 weeks on the same caloric deficit. So they were on a 33% caloric deficit, or in other words, they were eating 67% of their maintenance calories. Simple example, let's say they'd maintain their weight on 3000 calories, they would diet on 67% of that. So 2000 calories per day for 16 weeks straight. And that was group one. Group two used periodic diet breaks. So every two weeks, they would do a two week diet break at maintenance calories. So just running with the same example, they would diet on 2000 calories for two weeks and then do 3000 calories for two weeks, 2000 for two weeks, 3000 for two weeks. And then they repeated that for 30 total weeks. And the reason why the dieting period was longer in group two is because the researchers wanted to control for total net caloric deficit. And the only way they could do that and still implement the maintenance periods in the diet break group was to have them diet for a longer period of time. So just to keep it brief, uh, the bottom line was that the second group with the diet breaks ended up losing 50% more fat than the continuous dieting group. And they didn't lose any more muscle mass than the other group. And they actually only lost 50% as much resting energy expenditure. Or in other words, the resting energy expenditure only dropped by about half as much as the continuous dieting group. So as you can see in this graph, metabolism slowed in both groups initially, uh, but it sort of rebounded in the diet break group. So that by week 16, there was a pretty big difference between the two with the diet break group having on average significantly faster metabolisms. So these results are extremely impressive. Not only do you lose more fat, uh, you also sort of spare metabolism by utilizing these diet breaks. And I think that the metabolic benefits of diet breaks are particularly important, especially for long-term sustainability insofar as it allows the dieter to sort of eat more food. And having a faster metabolism is always a good thing when it comes to fat loss. And I think that this idea is supported in this study uh, because when they did a six month follow up after the dieting period was over, the disparity between the diet break group and the continuous dieting group had actually widened even more. So now at this point, the group that did the diet breaks were seeing 80 to 90% better fat loss than the continuous uh, caloric restriction group. And this is just because the continuous dieting group basically regained more weight after the diet had ended. Now, even though these results are really impressive and I think that they should encourage people to use diet breaks. I don't think that a diet break is a be all end all tactic for dieting success. One potential downside is that they usually require longer dieting periods. So even in this study, for example, the subjects that were doing the two week diet breaks were dieting for a total length of 30 weeks. That's seven months of diet. And a lot of people who may have some deadline to meet or perhaps they're dieting for some specific event may not want to diet for seven months just to get ready for it. And I don't think that this is necessary. In my personal coaching experience, I've seen a lot of success with shorter, more aggressive approaches without diet breaks. And certainly you can get your results uh, more quickly if taking this path. However, if you do take this path, uh, you run the risk of potentially regaining more weight after the diet has ended. 
So you have to be careful to be a little bit more controlled in that post diet period. And you also may not experience the same metabolic benefits as if you use the, the diet breaks. The whole idea of a diet break may sound very appealing. Uh, you get to spend two weeks just sort of eating more than if you were just dieting. However, going from a 33% deficit to maintenance calories isn't all that much of a break. And even though I used an example where you had a 3000 calorie maintenance, many people, especially women, have a much lower maintenance than this. So going from 33% deficit to maintenance might only be a bump of say, 400 or 500 extra calories per day, which may not feel like all that much of a diet break. And it might prolong the diet longer than it, it feels like it's not worth it at that point, uh, if that makes sense. And even during these uh, sort of diet break periods, you're still tracking your intake, uh, you're still not eating anything or as much as you want, and you're basically just eating at maintenance and prolonging the diet while doing so. Um, but with that said, this new research has definitely opened my eyes and convinced me to a greater extent of the utility of diet breaks. And I think that short of people who are dieting for a specific event or just want to get the weight off maybe as quickly as possible, interspersing these one to two week diet breaks throughout your diet is a good way to not only get better results, but also sustainable results. And we now have accumulating evidence to support this idea, which has already been shown to be very successful in the field. So I think it'd be interesting to see this study replicated in non-obese, populations or maybe in resistance trained lean folks um, to see if the the same results hold true here um, and i think it'd also be interesting to see the study replicated in women um, i've personally found utilizing diet breaks for women who are dieting to be really useful uh, but we need to see that study to be sure um, so hopefully someone picks that up so we can find that out um, but for now i would hypothesize that you would still see very similar results in lean, uh, resistance trained people, and also in women. Now on the other hand, uh, one to two day short term acute refeed days uh, seem to be very popular, perhaps more popular than the full blown one to two week diet break. Um, however, I personally haven't been quite as impressed with the data on those acute daily refeeds. However, I still think they may have merit, but that's a topic for another video. Uh, if you guys would like to hear me cover that, uh, you can just comment below and I'll be sure to do that in a future video. That's it for this one. Uh, this whole video was based off of an article by Eric Helms in this month's issue of Mass. You guys have heard me singing its praises here a lot, and that's because I really do think it's the best academic resource out there for condensing all the scientific literature that there is on exercise science and nutrition down to the most practical stuff that you need to know as an athlete, coach, uh, fitness content creator, or what have you. So if you guys aren't yet subscribed, I'd recommend checking out the link in the description and you can read up on a little bit more about it there. Uh, it does come highly recommended. So thanks for watching guys, that's it for this one. Uh, if you haven't seen my Quad Science Explained video yet, uh, you can give that one a watch. I'll put it up here next to my head somewhere. Uh, for whatever reason, YouTube decided that this video wasn't suitable for advertisers and I think that that sort of negatively impacted its visibility, which is a little bit frustrating. Um, um, so if you guys haven't seen it yet, uh, go give it a watch. And so you don't miss out on seeing the content that I'm putting out, uh, make sure you hit the notification bell so that you're not affected by this YouTube uh, visibility thing with the advertisements that's, that's going on right now. Um, so yeah, like the video if you liked it. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye.